We're at uh, Bell Fest 2014 here in Fishers, Indiana, and we are talking to Jonathan Pirelli, uh, entrepreneur, uh, investor, as well as filmmaker. Uh, you just ro rolled out a brand new film that was Startup Land. Startup Land. Tell us a little bit about that, real quick. Sure. So, Startup Land uh, basically is a genuine documentary. It's authentically captured in the wild in an accelerator in DC, five founders and their teams as they go through this program where they're raising money, they're building product, oh, they're wow. hiring, they're firing, they're getting out to meet customers, and it's all captured on film. And it was, so there are two versions of it. One is an educational series. Yeah. It's six episodes, about three hours in length, and it's available at startupland.tv. And then the other is a film cut version, which we hope to have in Park City at Sundance in January. Very cool. We've submitted, don't know if we're in, and if we're not, we'll go to other festivals, but we really want to be part of the Sundance community and the Sundance family, sure. and so we made a special film cut version of 90 Minutes just for Sundance. So, yeah. Very neat. Well, I mean, that, I think that kind of epitomizes uh, your passion, because you've had three startups. Five. Five, I'm sorry, five yep. startups, and you also are part of a, a venture capitalist fund right. that, that uh, is, is focused and on 40 different startups? We've invested in 40 companies at Fortify Ventures, oh yeah. Oh my gosh, that's fantastic. So you've got, you've got entrepreneurial in, the, in your blood. Right. It's <laughs> an addiction at this point. Absolutely. Yep. And, and with that, count the trappings of failure and, and witnessing failure with, with investment in the startups, but also executing uh, your own startups. That, you've, you've come across those landmines. Uh, uh, very, you're very familiar with those, I'd right. say, right? I am. Yeah. So, 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 tell me, there are lessons to learn, be learned from failure, but, but there's more importantly, there's a business um, perspective, a conservative business perspective in the Midwest that doesn't is not shared by the East Coast or the West Coast about how to embrace failure. Can you tell me a little bit about your perspective of that? Yeah, sure. I spoke about this on a panel earlier this morning and brought it up again when I just did a presentation. Um, you know, it's just ingrained in the culture here to be conservative, mm -hmm. and, and that's okay. It's done Indiana well. Indiana rides the storms of the economic times that are bad and rides them when they're good. We're in the black right now. Uh, the, the Governor Pence has been doing a great job, but in, in that respect, you're absolutely right. We're, we don't take as many risks, obviously. Right, and, and so part of taking risks is rewarding failure. So if we... If, if someone actually were in, on a sports team mm -hmm. and every time they took a shot, it didn't work, mm -hmm. they, they would do something else, like everybody takes layups, for example, was I think Michael Florin's example, right. then you're never going to win games with just layups. So you have to reward people when they're trying to go from the line and you have to do the same thing with entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. um, so there's so many examples to share, but the bottom line is this. A Scott Dorsey from Exact Target. Mm -hmm did not succeed every day of his life or every day as the founder and CEO of Exact Target. Right. There were a lot of failures along the way. Absolutely. We look at that as a success because of the end result, and that's a great way to measure success. But how do we measure failure? There's no metric for failure in Indiana nope. or in the Midwest, and that's the point of this event. It's okay that 100 startups get funded every year, and the next year there are only 20 left. That's the reality of startups. And, no, and, and the entire concept of business success is that there are going to be failures and, and this is what life tells us on a regular basis why doesn't I mean how can we expect business to not follow those same patterns we can't so that's why fail fest is important that's why I think it's really great for you to have folks on the show to talk mm -hmm. about their failures yep. today the, the company that I spoke about um, failed died went out of business in bankruptcy 13 years ago mm -hmm. we had sold it it's a long story it divested it didn't happen but today's the first time publicly in front of an audience I've ever talked about it it was incredibly therapeutic <laughs> like I feel so good right now having shared this because I should have paid all of them like they were my shrinks yeah. <laughs> I've talked to other people about it right one-on-one -on -one or in small groups in our accelerator with with some of the companies we've invested in but I've never done this before and it feels great would it have felt great one month after the failure we went bankruptcy I don't think so but right. but that's when we actually need to capture the essence of this I've had five startups one failed, the others have succeeded. The trick of, to this game is learning from the failures. Everyone says that, but why wouldn't we then categorize all of our failures so people can learn from them? Why reinvent the wheel of failure? Right. Don't do this, you'll fail, great. So instead of door number one, I'll try door number two. Someone else can say, you know what, it's not one through five, it's door six or seven, mm -hmm. and here's how I know, I've done this 10 times. So mentorship, 
Yeah, absolutely. It's a really important part, and advisors, really import, important part of not just startups. We think of startups as tech companies, biotech, nanotech, sure, sure, sure. but any business. We have to embrace people who've been there and done it before and reward them for doing so. Um, but more importantly, Indiana has got to get mm. over this. That's interesting. This approach to failure, like it's got to change. That's why I came today. When John Wexler said, hey, I really want you to come from D.C., mm -hmm. I have a West Coast mentality too, just like he does, and we've both spent a lot of time in Silicon Valley, and, and share with people what this badge of failure as an honorable badge is, yep. that's the point of today. So, so going off on this No, tangent, no, no, but. it's absolutely where we need to go. Um, you know, the, you, you're, you're speaking about, about mentorships, not just in tech, not just in, in, in I mean, those are the, the sexy businesses, but I mean, honestly, there should be a feedback mentorship for all these different vertical markets where, I mean, if you're starting a shoe store, all right, learn from examples of other people that have done it successfully, but also those, those who have failed and be able to have it. We, we see we see different regional uh, labs like this, uh, different regional launch pads like this. But there's things happening all across the country about about <clears throat> just giving feedback, entrepreneurial advisory panels where 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 people can soundboard different things, but also learn from direct example. Is there a larger perspective of how to tap into different in, different types of industries? Uh, of, 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 of individuals that can give guidance. Sure. So there may not be a particular shoe store mentor here, right? Right. But there may be somebody in D.C. that can that can help. Yeah. So the United States Department of Commerce mm -hmm. and um, the Small Business Administration yep. actually have on their website links to things like SCORE, which is I forget the acronym, but it's retired executives. So a lot of people who've done it before, Very cool. and they are willing to mentor for free. Very cool. So that's one avenue. I think um, there are a lot of networking groups, um, BNI and others, uh, sure. YEO, YPO, Vistage. Some of those require a significant amount of revenue right. um, and success level and metric for, for founders to be a part of, but, but others don't. And one of the things about a peer group, and people can start this on their own. Mm -hmm. Now, competitive shoe store owners might not do that in the same markets, sure. but, but a shoe store owner, a banker, a restauranteur, a, a dry cleaner, they all get together and talk about hey, I had a cash flow crunch last quarter and here's how I got through it and it worked and it was X, Y, and Z. I would like to tell you how to do that. Now that's exactly what you're Absolutely. saying is exactly what needs to happen. Yep. And I think when you have a culture that's conservative, people don't want to talk about their failures. They don't want to say, I am dying inside right now. Right. My wife wants to leave me. I'm about to lose the house. I have credit card debt that I can't manage and I'm done. Now that's not a place we want anyone to get to. So the trick is, how do we keep, how do we prevent that from happening? Hmm. And I think just being more open about failure and talking about it will help. Absolutely. Well, these are all great thoughts. How can we follow you and your endeavors? Um, so I'm a, I'm a fanatic about Twitter. Like Facebook, I'm on and off. Uh, LinkedIn, sorry, sure. I'm there, but I don't, I'm not as heavy of, as a user. John Wexler introduced me to, to um, Twitter when I lived in Indiana, <laughs> and it wasn't even a few months old. And there was no interface, there was no app, it was just all via SMS. Right. And um, I've just grown to love it. Every day I start reading people I respect and admire and follow. Uh, and, and so that's where I am. Um, you know, the, the thing that I'm up to now is a new company will announce. Uh, so, so I learned so much as an investor, mm -hmm. watching companies do things I didn't do when I was an entrepreneur. So for the last four years I've seen I mean, we had a lean canvas, but not the way it's utilized today. We, we did some really cool things with agile development, but nothing close. Sure. So all these new tra tricks, tactics, tools, um, I've learned a lot about, and it just made me decide, I'll always be an investor. I'll right. invest in startups and support, and we have a fund that's fortunately doing well. But more importantly, I want to be an entrepreneur again. So a wearable tech company based out of D.C. Um, will be launching products next year that I'm co-founder cool. and CEO of, and um, we're really in stealth mode, which is kind of the way we have to do it right now based on intellectual property. So. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, we'll certainly watch for that, and uh, we'll watch your Twitter as well. And uh, feel free to give us a tap on the shoulder whenever that's coming out, because we certainly want to promote you. Sounds great. All right. I appreciate the opportunity. Absolutely. Thanks really so nice much. Chat with you.